Hello, Central Florida. I'm Lisa Kreit. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Central Florida News 13. Thank you for tuning in to Central Florida News 13 this Tuesday. We're the first and only 24-hour news channel dedicated to bringing you local news. Coming up, we'll have more local news and a look at your weather on the wines. We are bringing you the very latest each half hour on the search for John F. Kennedy Jr.'s plane off the coast of Massachusetts. The single engine plane, believed to have been piloted by Kennedy, has been missing for more than 19 hours now. Today on Dayside, hundreds of people are searching for any sign of Natalie Holloway. Lisa Kreitz is spokesperson for Greppo Anderson in Aruba. They own the restaurant where Natalie was last seen. That's uh, Carlos and Charlie's. Uh, Lisa, thank you for being with us. Boy, I tell you one thing in this case, Lisa, uh, that kind of startled me, and I probably started all of all Rubens, is that Aruba takes such care in taking care of their tourists. They absolutely do. In fact, I was talking to one of the producers earlier, and they have something called the Aruba Hospitality and Safety Foundation. This organization was created four years ago, uh, primarily to focus on the safety and security of the island and really up the measures on that. More than $1 million a year are funded into this organization by the private sector. So it gives you a better idea of how important the government wants this island to be uh, for the tourists, the local, the citizens, the visitors. And, and it's, it's really a, a nice place in an unfortunate situation. Cirrus Design Corporation is a company dedicated to aeronautical innovation. Their pursuit of excellence and passion for bringing technology to the personal aviation market has become standard for the company. The first to introduce various innovative safety products, they famously unveiled the airframe parachute system, which according to Cirrus executives is considered standard safety equipment for all Cirrus aircraft. Each aircraft has a parachute inside the aircraft that actually deploys and the entire aircraft come, comes down under the canopy of the parachute. Ranging from a moderate $199,000 to over half a million, Cirrus products are considered less costly than most in the marketplace. Products offer four-seater cabins with various engine configurations. Though driving is not the focus with Cirrus, they want the elegance, the comfort, and artful design of the automobile. We also take a, a much different viewpoint on the luxury, the fit and finish of the product. Uh, we take an automotive tend towards everything that we do from the standpoint of the ergonomics inside the aircraft also so when people sit inside the aircraft it feels familiar. Cirrus has come a long way since 1984 when their primary product was kit airplanes. Fast forward to 2007 they have the best selling aircraft in their market with 3200 customers in more than 20 countries. For NADA TV I'm Lisa Price. Dave Cotterell is here with a last look at our weather forecast. Nice weather this week. It was nice and cool. Nice and cool, but cloudy yeah, and rainy. Cloudy. Oh, cool weather in sight this week, Lisa. Sorry about that. I know you're anxious to get your winter woolens out. Actually, you know, it's it's so sunny all the time in Florida. I like it when it's a little well, cloudy. A lot of folks and, do. And I, I like that, and I'm ready for winter. It's, it's almost like a, it's almost like a change of of uh, seasons, but but not quite. Not, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Yep. That's 11 at 11, but don't go away. There's much more news, weather, and sports just ahead on your 24-hour local news channel, Central Florida News 13. This is an In Health News Break. I'm Lisa Kreitz in Health News This Hour. Doctors may soon have a new tool to predict heart attacks in patients with no apparent symptoms of heart disease. An experimental type of magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, is being developed at Stanford University. I'm Lisa Kreitz in Health News This Hour. A popular arthritis drug may now be able to help patients with heart disease. Researchers at Baylor Medical Center say the drug Enbrel may help restore the body's normal balance of proteins. And if you're turning prematurely gray, chances are it's just a sign of getting older. Scientists say graying is a sign of pigmentation loss in hair, which can begin as young as age 20, but picks up in the 30s and 40s. For more health information, visit our website. A readiness survey shows the Sunshine State to be one of the most prepared states in the nation. Orlando Sentinel high-tech industry writer Richard Burnett is in the Sentinel newsroom with survey results. Hi, Richard. Thanks Hi, for joining us. Tell us more about the survey. Well, Florida officials are very optimistic to say that they believe Florida won't have a problem when other places might. Were any localities still not prepared? 
Well, as in any survey of this type, yes, there are some uh, trouble spots. This is Richard Burnett of the Orlando Sentinel with information regarding the state of Florida and where we stand in our preparations for the new millennium. Richard's story about the state's Y2K readiness can be read in Tuesday's Orlando Sentinel. Pootie is the third trained Alzheimer's dog in the country and the first in Florida. If you have a friend or family member that has been afflicted with the Alzheimer's disease and would like to learn more about the Okada Alzheimer's dog program, several Central Florida hospitals have implemented the needleless technology program. The bottom line is that it decreases needle sticks by 80%, which lowers the chances of transmitting infectious disease. Dr. Fuentes says the babies will stay here at the hospital for at least three to four weeks or, or until they're five to five and a half pounds each. Back to you, Rod. Now, Lisa, did she know she was having two boys and two girls? I mean, this wasn't a big surprise to her, was it? Actually, when she was 10 weeks pregnant, the doctor told her that she was going to have quadruplets, but it wasn't until the 22nd week that she found out the gender of the babies. Looks like a big happy family, though, there. Thanks a lot, Lisa. According to national statistics, over 180,000 women are diagnosed every year with breast cancer. Orlando Regional Healthcare System is the only site in Florida that offers a new test that helps predict breast cancer reoccurrence. Having a baby when you're around the age of 40 is not always easy. The chances of carrying a baby to term, however, increases 95% after the first trimester of pregnancy. That's when doctors can see cardiac activity and the chance of a miscarriage drops to less than 5%. We've caught up with one Central Florida woman who has just completed her first trimester of pregnancy at the age of 39. And in our three-part series, we're going to follow her through this pregnancy to the end. I haven't gained weight yet. You will. Yeah, I've been throwing up a lot. That's a good sign. That's why you didn't miscarry. That's what I feel. Meet Orlando resident Lee Herr. She's 12 weeks pregnant with her first child. And she's almost 40 years old with a history of miscarriages. So you can understand her excitement as well as her emotional and nervous state of mind. And this is Dr. Plotkin, Lee's OBGYN for the past eight years. He's been through one miscarriage with her. The most likely diagnosis is it was just an abnormal fetus. We can't really tell. It was not that far along. Although I believe we did see a heartbeat on an ultrasound and then lost the heartbeat. The most likely diagnosis in that case is, uh, is an abnormal fetus, even though we can't prove it. He's a bit concerned about her history, but he feels her age won't be a factor in having a healthy baby, even though age can sometimes cause risk for certain birth defects. There is an increased risk of uh, chromosome birth defects. There's an increased risk of high blood pressure. There's an increased risk of diabetes. But in general, in my 25 years of experience, there's virtually no major problems. Uh, the biggest problem is, that is, is the conception in the first place. Lee has also had problems getting pregnant over the past few years, most likely because of her age. The peak fertility time for women is 20 to 25. Getting pregnant after your mid-20s is tougher. Dr. Plotkin says stress levels and quality of ovulation are the main culprits. If a woman delays childbearing uh, purposely, um, then it just, it, it, there's, just a, there's a lower fertility rate which makes it much more frustrating for the patient and for her physician who is trying to help her get pregnant. Luckily, after several years of trying, Lee is finally pregnant again. At 12 weeks, she's yet to hear a baby's heartbeat, but she's waiting anxiously. And that's the look at Lee's face. That could be the best Thanksgiving turkey present I know. Did you hear how fast Now that's, that's your pulse. And there's Lee's baby. So she has successfully gone beyond all of her previous problems. I just wanted to make sure that she stayed pregnant. We saw a heartbeat and that we didn't lose the heartbeat this time. And uh, she had several early ultrasounds and we were very happy to see a heartbeat that didn't go away. So therefore we knew that this was a viable pregnancy and she got beyond the third month and didn't miscarry. So Lee's first trimester of pregnancy is over. All checkups and tests have been A-OK -okay so far. As far as Dr. Plotkin's concerned, I, I she is carrying a healthy baby. Aggressive with it until the if you're pregnant and in your 40s or late 30s as Lee is, one of your biggest decisions is whether to have a test called amniocentesis. This test helps rule out the chances of having a Down syndrome baby, but it's also a test that could be dangerous to both baby and mother. We'll talk more about that tomorrow in the second part of our three-part series of Having Babies Later in Life. That's news for your health. I'm Lisa Kreitz. 
This little girl has a lot to be thankful for this holiday season. Her name is Brianna. She's seven years old and an extremely healthy child. But when she was born, she was no larger than this Barbie doll, weighing in at only one pound, nine ounces. Brianna's mother, Paula, went into labor 15 weeks early. Doctors told her Brianna would only have a 10% survival rate with major complications. She was born and she sounded like a kitten when she came out. She sounded like she was meowing almost. She was breathing on her own for 48 hours. Then they intubated her. Brianna had to be intubated, where they put a breathing tube down her throat to help her breathe. Her lungs were only the size of tea bags. Her feet were the size of two quarters when you put two quarters together. And after she was about two months old, we started getting more comfortable around her and would pick her up because, at, you know, she was this big. And then I took my wedding band one day and I um, slipped it over her whole hand and it just went all the way up, all the way up to her shoulder. And it was just, it was very scary to know that, oh my gosh, her arm was no bigger than this. Premature babies can face unlimited complications such as cerebral palsy, brain bleeds from too much oxygen, blindness, and even deafness. But Brianna had only one major problem, a bout with pneumonia at three months. She spent 75 days in the hospital before being released. The Guinness Book um, has a world record for smallest infant. It's a, it's a little boy and he was I'm one Okay, he was one pound and six ounces. And they didn't have a record for a female, but Brianna's one pound and nine ounces. So we're thinking she's probably pretty close to being one of the world's smallest um, babies. And the best part of this story is that Brianna will turn eight on Saturday and has no health problems at all. That's a look at your health. Lisa Kreitz, Central Florida News 13. Thanks for joining us this half hour of Florida Minute and your weather on the ones are next. I'm Lisa Christ. Have a good Saturday, everyone. Thank you for watching this edition of Central Florida News 13. I'm Lisa Christ.